Valentine's Day, a Marvel fanfiction written by JJ Doggy S on AO3. There's a big difference between the Tony Stark of 20 years ago and the Tony Stark of today. The Tony Stark of 20 years ago couldn't have bothered to give a shit about anyone other than himself, whereas the Tony Stark of today tried his best to show his loved ones that he gave a shit about them. That is until he almost dropped the ball on Valentine's Day. This is how it happened. It all started with one Peter Benjamin Parker. Oh. Peter had a knack for getting in trouble, which he couldn't get himself out of, which is why Tony had to stop his very important work task, although Pepper would later disagree on its importance, to get the kid out of trouble. Again. Except this time, Tony was truly stumped. He'd followed where Karen had been sending Friday the coordinates of the Spider-Man suit, aka where Peter Parker should have been, but there was nothing and no one there. Fry, what's going on? I'm not sure, sir, Friday answered him. I'm trying to connect with Karen now. After an uncomfortable beat of silence between Tony and Friday, Tony's eyes kept flicking around the area looking for any signs of someone with a red suit or some brown hair, but nothing. I am unable to connect with Karen at the moment, sir. Is there another course of action you'd like me to take? Um, no, Tony answered. Just keep trying, Fry. Of course, sir. Despite Friday not being able to connect with Karen, either in Peter's watch or the Spider-Man suit, Tony couldn't resist calling out for the missing teen. Underoos, you there? It's dark. There was an oddly low amount of foot traffic on the streets of Queens, so there was no need to worry about outing Peter's superhero secret identity. There was, unsurprisingly, no response from the teen in question, but as Tony continued his surveillance of the surrounding area, he spotted some red on the ground. It wasn't Spider-Man suit, but blood. Fry? Looking for a match, sir, Friday answered, matching any DNA she could find in the small puddle of blood on the asphalt to any record she had in the Avengers. She managed to find one. Match found, sir. Peter B. Parker, also known as Spider-Man, or as you like to call him, Underoos. As soon as he heard what Friday had told him, Tony was already moving into the alley. Thanks, Fry. When Friday stopped talking to him, Tony could distantly hear something, or someone, moving behind the metal trash cans near the back of the alley. Peter? Tony called out, continuing his slow approach towards what he hoped was the missing teen. It seemed his silent prayers were answered. Mr. Stark, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Tony sighed. He was relieved that Peter hadn't disappeared off the face of the earth. There was also another issue at hand that needed to be addressed. So, what's going on, Pete? Oh, not much, Peter replied, still hidden by the trash cans. So, what's going on with you, Mrs. Stark? How's Miss Fox? Sorry, Mrs. Stark, how's Miss Stark and Morgan? How's Morgan? If it weren't for the fact that Tony knew Peter was bleeding, he may have been somewhat amused by how well the kid was changing the direction of the conversation. She was well, Pete, but we do need to talk. About what? Peter inched out slowly from behind the trash cans, still half adorned in Spider-Man suit, until he was standing in front of Tony, who looked pissed and disappointed. The blood, Pete. Oh yeah, the blood. So, what happened? Oh, I, um, got stabbed? You got stabbed? Definitely. Peter. Sorry. How'd it happen, Pete? Well, I was getting this necklace for MJ for Valentine's Day. Peter looked utterly embarrassed, telling Tony about what had been happening before he'd gotten stabbed. A blush spreading across the teen's face certainly didn't help. This one that has a dahlia flower on it to replace the one from last summer that broke. I was trying to get this necklace on my way back with Ned and the necklace, then these guys, so these guys, three of them, and it just felt like something was off about them. Like, Spidey sense triggering, sort of? Peter nodded and slowly continued. Yeah. So I, I followed them, and Ned had to go back to my place with the necklace, and while I was following them, I heard them talk about a robbery they were planning at a bank. Tony wanted to lecture Peter about being stupid and not telling him or anyone else that could have helped him, but he also knew the teen far too well to know that lecturing hardly ever worked. Oblivious to Tony's inner turmoil, Peter continued his retelling. So when I found a good alley, I went to change to Spider-Man, and then I went to go stop them. Well, when I went to go stop them, they were just getting to the bank, and I didn't realize I had knives, and one of them got a lot closer than I thought, and they got a pretty good shot at me, and Peter finished, waving his hand slightly at the stab wound in his abdomen that had just started to bleed. Jesus, Pete, we need to get you back to the compound, Tony said, already pulling out his phone and texting Happy to come pick them up. Make sure you get all fixed up. Knowing he wouldn't be able to pull out of it, Peter said, Okay, thanks, before another thought popped into his head. Do you think Miss Stark is going to be mad at me pulling you away from her and Morgan on Valentine's Day? That got Tony's head to snap up. What? I, I said, do you think 
No, no, no. I heard what you said, Pete. Flynn said, trying to reassure the teen who was visibly nervous that he'd ruined some non-existent plans between him, his wife, and his daughter. Pep's gonna be mad at me, not you. No one can be mad at you for like ten seconds anyway. Really? Yeah. Even you? Don't push it, kid. Tony's phone buzzed, receiving a text from Happy, like he was waiting for them. Let's go, Underoos. I think me and you might have to make a bit of a pit stop on our way if you're up for it. Peter nodded, and the two made their way to a very familiar black car that was waiting for them just down the street. Once they'd gotten into the car, they made a quick pit stop and picked up a big bouquet of flowers for Pepper and a smaller bouquet of flowers for Morgan. Only after making sure that Peter wasn't in too much pain from a stab wound that had already been healing itself, they were back to the compound in no time. Happy had volunteered to take Peter to the medical wing, which was a bit strange for Tony, seeing how much Happy and Peter's relationship had improved since Happy's fight with Beck, or as he liked to call himself, Mysterio, last summer. Tony had still been recovering from his fight with Thanos and using the stones. He hadn't expected to survive it, but he did, and he would be forever grateful that he did. Back to the task at hand, Tony was about to take one of the cars back to the little cabin when Happy told him that Pepper and Morgan were up in his penthouse. Rather than taking his car, he took the elevator up to one of the highest floors in the building. As the doors opened to reveal a smug Pepper and an overly excited Morgan waiting for him in the dining room. He left the elevator, leaving the bouquets on a nearby table and walked into the dining room. Immediately pressed a kiss to Pepper's lips, followed by one to each of Morgan's cheeks. To what thought it was a surprise, Tony asked, although he had a pretty good feeling of what it was. Have you forgotten what today is? Pepper asked him. Morgan, pulling on his leg, prompted him to pick her up as he joked, Happy birthday. Hello, Daddy. Morgan laughed in his ear, getting both of her parents to crack a smile. It's Valentine's Day. Well, Tony said, tracing back slightly to the table he'd left the flowers on, grabbing them before handing them to his wife and daughter. Good thing I have these. You remembered, Morgan said, already pulling up some of the petals of the flowers. Mom said she didn't think you would, but I knew you would. Tony pretended to be offended at Pepper's lack of faith in him, even if she was right. Did she now? asked Tony, which Morgan nodded to before wiggling to be put down. Tony obliged, taking his turn to look smugly at Pepper, who looked unfazed. As Morgan ran off to go play with her toys, Pepper pressed a kiss to Tony's cheek before asking, How's Peter? Oh, shit. He'll be fine, Pep. Knowing how busted he already was, Tony asked her, How did you know? Happy told me, Of course he did.